Yellman reporting for KD Chats here in downtown Toronto with director Morgan White of The Rep. What was your inspiration for initially making this film? Uh, well, I always loved going to repertory cinemas. Uh, I found them when I came to Toronto for school. Mm -hmm. I went to the Bloor once and uh, it just kind of changed my perspective on cinema. I went to a screening of uh, Land of the Dead, which is a George Romero zombie movie. And I'd never been in a theater where you know people were yelling at the screen and just kind of chewing up the movie, which was really fun. Um, I come from a small town and we don't have a repertory cinema. And it was just cool that some theater was playing older films, different things. So that was kind of the inspiration. And I always thought it would be cool to like look behind the scenes of a movie theater mm -hmm. and what happens back behind the scenes. Uh, because you know most people walk into a movie theater, they buy their popcorn, they sit down, they watch the movie, maybe watch the movie, mm -hmm. and then they leave. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's their entire view of a movie theater, but what happens behind the scenes? So that was kind of the inspiration. And for those who may not know exactly what a repertory theater is, could you explain that a little bit? A uh, repertory theater is basically a theater that plays anything that's kind of, well, it's offbeat maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, older stuff, um, older films like cl classics, cult classics definitely. Uh, Toronto seems to play a lot of 80s fare. That's their repertory stuff. Um, basically, any theater that's not playing first run, which is uh, like a multiplex, would, would play first run movies. And throughout the making of your film, you got some terrific interviews with the likes of George A. Romero and many others. How did you approach getting those interviews? Uh, a couple of them were really easy because they, they, uh, they were friends of the theater that the main focus of the film is about, the, uh, the Toronto Underground Cinema. So that was, John Waters was there, he was at a screening, and I just went up to him and asked him if he would, you know, be cool with me interviewing him, and he said, yeah, for sure. Same thing with Kevin Smith, he came to the theater, so that was really easy. Uh, Romero was a little different, I, uh, I was at a party, uh, and he was there, and it took me a long time to build up the confidence to go up and talk to him. But I finally did, and he was really cool. He was really into it. Uh, and it took a little while to get him, but finally it worked out. And I actually got to go to his house. Ooh. Yeah, which was really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could go back and like tell my 17-year-old self that I'm going to go to Romero's house, because it was <laughs> really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and when, while you were making the film and doing all of your research, what was the thing that perhaps caught you off guard the most that perhaps you didn't expect? <laughs> I don't know. If there is one. Um, I don't think anything really caught me off guard. I think I had built this thesis in my head about how difficult it is to, to run a repertory cinema. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that was really um, interesting was that I went around to these different theaters and everyone kind of was experiencing the same thing. Uh, even the big cinemas. Uh, so places like the New Beverly in LA. The New Beverly is owned by Quentin Tarantino. It's a really famous repertory cinema. It struggles. Mm. So I think that, that wasn't necessarily something that caught me off guard, but it was interesting to realize that that's the same plight everywhere, even in a place like Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to run a rep cinema. And tell me a little bit about your distribution process, which is very unique. So the idea is that I'm offering the film for free to any theater, repertory theater, uh, that wants to screen it. I, I have to be specific with that. Um, so any repertory or independent theater can screen it for free, and they get to keep 100% of the profits. And the reason for that is that I made this film with the passion of, and, and realizing that you know, it's a real struggle for these theaters to, to run. Uh, and this is kind of my way of giving back a little. Um, I, repertory cinema and independent cinemas are, are a really big part of uh, cinema and I think it's something that not a lot of people get to experience or not enough people experience. So anything that I can do to help the plight of a repertory cinema uh, is, is great. Would you recommend this distribution process? <laughs> uh, it, probably not. I don't think it necessarily works with uh, many films. It works fine with my film because it's about repertory cinema so it's the idea of giving back. Um, but I wouldn't suggest that you spend a bunch of money on a movie and then just give it away for free. Um, I just want as many people to get the message, so that's why I'm doing it, but I, I wouldn't suggest it to anyone else. <laughs> and do you have any upcoming projects that you want to talk about? Uh, I don't right now. The big project is trying to get this movie into as many theaters as possible, um, which has actually become a lot bigger project than I thought it was going to be, which is great. Uh, I'm getting contacted by theaters all over the world there's going to be a screening in London, England. There's going to be a screening in, uh, in um, Melbourne, Australia. So it's, it's just cool 
Uh, and it's, it's taking up a lot more of my time than I thought, but that's great. Mm -hmm. And where's the best place for us to find out more information on you and on the film online? Uh, if you want to check out uh, www.therepseries.com, uh, that's the best place to find out anything about the film. Great. Thank you so much. Congratulations and best of luck with the project. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats here in downtown Toronto.